Greetings my friends and welcome to a brand new episode of our Nation's Guide here. Today we're going to be looking at Portugal. Portugal sits in a very unique position here within this campaign my friends for various reasons. The first of course is the nation that it is pretty much landlocked with and that is Spain, the absolute titan, the behemoth here at the start of this campaign. As in most campaigns, when you start empire my friends, Spain really is the absolute one of the outstanding nations in terms of what in terms of not only their sort of the military force to start with, but also the sheer amount of econo economy that's available to them or will become available to them in the future, and that is that also puts them as a potential very very strong um, enemy indeed, or a potential ally depending on how you play it. But let's first of all look at start what we start with as Portugal. Let's have a look at the region you start with here, Lisbon here. Now you have two regions. You have Lisbon and also Goa. Now Goa, of course, in the Indian the subcontinent there. And of course, you've got the Mughal and the Marathan Confederacy fighting one another in a civil war there. Depending on how that comes out, depending on how that works, you can possibly have a very interesting outcome there if you play your cards right there. If you play the d diplomatic card right there, it can indeed become quite a prosperous area for you. But let's first look at the homeland here. Look, let's look at Lisbon, let's look at Portugal as a whole. So straight away you start with a quite a formidable capital here, as you can see, already bringing 3,330, that's, that's the regional wealth here, 1,351 already coming in, that is pretty good indeed, but it, of course that can be boosted by the technology and indeed by the construction of the sort of the buildings here. Now, of course, straight away you can get barracks, barracks here opens up, straight away it opens up line infantry, the Irish brigade and also re regiment of horse here. Carboneers, of course you need carbines for that, and then of course there's um, Gazadores. Now, my pronunciation of Portuguese, my friends, is going to be horrific, so I do apologise for any Portuguese um, watchers of this video. I really do in advance my poor pronunciations here. But you need, machine, need machined rifling for that. Machine rifling is quite far down the tech tree, um, or quite high in the tech tree, should I say. So you're going to have to go almost to the very bottom of the tech tree. Um, to really get that, so it's going to be quite a number of years before we get that. Let's we start. So we start off with an army encampment. We got a, a government council, which is actually pretty not too adv pretty advanced. It is pretty good. Of course, we can go to government chambers, which will then bring in 12% bonus for the tax income. And then we of course we've got the opera house, which is good for um, sort of happiness of the population, um, and also brings in a small amount of town wealth. But at this point, every single gold coin will count. It really will, because maybe you've only got this region. Lisbon and Goa, you don't have a massive empire at all, you are pretty much a very, very, very small fish in an extremely large pond at this point in the, in the, in the campaign, but that can be turned around with good diplomacy and with good use of military force at sort of precision striking at, at foes that aren't ready for you, or foes that aren't going to have any sort of allies to back them up. Then of course we've got the Admiralty, this will be key. The Admiralty will be absolutely essential. Your sea sort of routes, your trade routes, your naval force will be absolutely essential to guarding and keeping Portugal safe and also expanding. It really is, I kind of over, over sort of state the importance of a good naval force for Portugal. It really is important you get that up pretty quick here. Then of course we've got Canada Foundry and of course then we've got the sort of the walls of fortifications. Recruitment, you do start with some very, very good of, um, units available to you. Of course, I haven't got line infantry yet until you get barracks, so I would definitely recommend getting barracks as soon as you can. Um, that would be definitely my first sort of ploughing amount of, of money I straight into there. Then, recruitment, of course, then you've got Regiment of Horse, you've got the Demi Cannons, Skate or Sakers, then you've got Irish Brigade, uh, Militia, the Guerrillas. Actually, you've got very good accuracy. The guerrillas are very, very good, at, actually. And then you've got uh, the Miliquet and the Miliquet. The Miquelets, the Miquelets, I think I've said that right, but they gain the light inventory very good already, you can get these units for them, some pretty good units to start with here. Infrastructure of course is basic roads, so you want to try and get the copper roads up if you can as quickly as possible. And you do start off with a pretty good army as well. Oh, we've got a good general, <coughs> you've got one regiment of horse, um, you've got demi cannons, pikemen and militia. Now, many of you who have seen my, some of my, my videos in the past, Pikemen really, I don't really stick with pikemen very much. I usually time tend to um, remove the sort of, uh, you know, disband the pikemen regiment as soon as possible to free up the money, especially the um, upkeep here, which is 220. That's quite a lot, really, for what the regiment actually is. But there are also many of you who 
I absolutely swear by the pikemen who think the pikemen are absolutely fantastic, especially when the sort of early battles when technology isn't very high up um, sort of on the agenda and you, many of the armies you might face, many of the enemies you might face aren't really that technologically advanced either, so they haven't got line, they haven't got um, fire, by, um, fire by rank and things like that, so the pikemen can do have a use, but personally I'd rather swap them out for another regiment, maybe a regiment of horse, or even um, um, you know, wait for line infantry to become available once you start um, researching that. So that's pretty much what Lisbon has got here. And of course, roads will be vital here. So definitely get the infrastructure up to cobble roads as quickly as possible. Invest in that, and also invest in the barracks as soon as possible. And of course, you have to wait for the naval shore facilities before we get the naval board. But you know. That is pretty much what you start with, is sort of the capital of Portugal here. Then, of course, you've got the farm. And again, what is the farm going to bring in here? 125 per region with that is pretty low there. They might be going to get that. But again, every piece of gold will count. Now, of course, you've got a school, which is definitely going to be really, really handy here for the research technology. Again, you're not going to be researching very quickly. But again, you've got a gentleman here, which you can pop into the school. And that will, of course, boost the research rate and the speed which things are researched. Then you've also got here one of the most pivotal things here, which is the Weaver's Cottage again. 450 for the regional wealth, 10% turn down to town wealth. That's an excellent Weaver's Cottage. You re we really want to try and boost that as quickly as possible. But again, remember my friends, gold is going to be in short supply until we can really sort of establishing some good trade routes and also using antipromatic nows as it were to really get things going. As you can see, we've got 6,905 here coming from the roads and the trade routes here coming from to and from Lisbon. We've got the Mughal Empire, who we are trading with, and Great Britain. We re really want to expand that sort of amount of trade and negotiate as hard as you can with the nations here. Then, of course, you've got the vineyards here. Look at that. Vineyards, which can bring in 525. Now, that is an excellent prospect here. For 500, that is a really good trade off there as well. Population growth will go up as well, which is always good. So again, as soon as you can get some of these, uh, my personal preference would be to invest in an armory here, um, and then also get the infrastructure up into cobble roads and invest in this vineyard here because that really will boost quite significantly your income here, particularly your tax income, as it really is vital. And of course, you've got your sp your reiki, your spy, Hugo Spinoza, and again, immediately the first thing I would do, I would send him it straight outside of Madrid here, or in and around the sort of the the mountains here, the hills here, in and around Spain here, which sort of, you know, link Spain to Portugal, just to keep an eye on any any movement in between um, Spain and Portugal here. As you can see, you've got the river running through here. You've got a port, a growing port as well, which is called Porto, the absolute hub here of all your trade. If this is blockaded, then you will suffer very, very hard here from um, a great deal of hardship here in terms of money. This really is the absolute apogee. You really need to keep this port open as quickly as you, uh, as, as long as you can, because you will if you go to war with any of the major nations. The first thing they will do is they will immediately blockade this port here, and it is the absolute hub here of all your finances. Because let's have a quick look here. We can have a look at our regional our trade. I mean, look at that. Look at the ivory coming in here. This really is absolute ivory. It's 31, the most you can get here. And of course, we've got that. Look at the ivory here. That is absolutely incredible. The supply here exports are ivory uh, to Great Britain and also the Mughal Empire. We've got lots of sugar. We've also got um, other goods. And we've also got tea as well. But the ivory is absolutely the king here. That really is a massive boost to our income there, the ivory. Um, we are allied with Britain war with the pirates and the Mughal. I've got trade partners of the Mughal and also Great Britain. I beg your pardon, the pirates and the Barbary states, not the Mughal, I do beg your pardon. Um, we've got 4,258 coming in next to him, which is massive. It really is, and that's because of the ivory. Look at the trade income there. 4,000. That's why Porto is so important. It must be guarded at all costs. Tax income is pretty low, but it does pay for the army we've got. But look at the naval upkeep. The naval upkeep is absolutely huge. So, with that in mind, let's have a look at what ministers you get here with Portugal. Now, the king is not brilliant. The king is not brilliant at all. A sportsman bo born, so basically he's more interested in sport than he is in administration, so minus one to management, and a lewd, lewd and loose. In other words, he doesn't care who he, how he talks or who he talks to. So that really is going to be... So this king, Pedro II, is not a brilliant king, but look at what you've got here for the ministers here. Some of these ministers are absolutely fantastic. 
Eduardo Bastos here. Press one prestige plus eight to diplomatic relations and plus two to town wealth. Brilliant. Treasury is fantastic. Plus two to bonus to global tax. Plus four to to growth and trade route and plus four to town wealth. And we've got justice has gained good suppression rates. The naval minister not brilliant. Now because you're a constitutional monarchy, this means you can only um, kick them out. You can't replace them because it requires a vote. It's not an absolute monarchy. Um, so um, the Vega here, I, I would probably the first thing I would do is try and replace him with another minister. Um, then we've got the naval minister who is absolutely fantastic. Minus two the upkeep cost of all naval units. And then we've got India, uh, which again plus one all through there. Minus one the upkeep of all army units as well there, so that's fantastic. Some of these units, yes, that would be more like it for the army bonvoyant. Symbarite. Industrial revolutionary. Frugal and thrifty. Tactician. Now this would be a good a good possible replacement for the army here. Well, Samuel Caro. Um, bon voyant, and last but not least, we really don't want to use a gentleman at all. So the only one we would change probably is the army. Um, just to try and bring the cost down if possible, the army of the rest of the ministers are absolutely fantastic. Um, tax rates are pretty high, but I'll keep that as it is. But you can lower the tax rates as um, your empire expands. Now, let's have a look at Goa, my friends, because that really is, could be an important centre here. Here it is, Goa, as you can see here, right on the border of the Arthur Confederacy and also of the Mysoreans here. And again, look at that there. 364 coming out of here, but we've got a fleet here. And look at that, a fantastic admiral as well. Santo Alberto, son of the sea, plus two to command battles and plus 5% movement range, and then brave sailor. What a wonderful admiral he is. Now, you... Will, is this really essential here, this fleet? I don't know if it is, to be honest with you. But, considering how probably important Goa is, into or could be, it probably might be best thing to leave it here for the meantime. You are, we do have good trade relations here with the, with the Mukal Empire. With the Marathans, nothing yet here. But that doesn't mean we can't do anything here at all. You know, the problem is they're trading quite heavily there with the, with the Dutch. Um, again, we've Can got a spy here that? as well. When I was going to, the spy will be important here. Personally, I would put the spy around about here, in between Mysore and the Maratha Confederacy, just to keep an eye on things, the troop movements. Goa itself is not the most healthy of places at the moment. 285 only coming in there, so I would definitely upgrade this to Governor's Residence, get that plus three bonus. Infrastructure, of course, cobbled roads. And the army here is not going to be brilliant either, is it? do have here though small tea plantation and that's about it really but it's this is more of a strategic holding here but that means you have to ferry troops in and out of Goa um, because the army you're going to get here is not going to be brilliant at all because you're going to get colonial militia here so holding on to Goa is going to be extremely difficult unless you start ferrying in troops which is something you have to consider doing my friends if you want to hold on to your sort of holdings here in um, the subcontinent here. And again, if the Mughal Empire is um, victorious over the Marathans, then there's a good chance the the trade we have will only grow exponentially. It really will grow massively here. Um, so that really is an important thing to consider as well. Now let's have a look at diplomatic relations. Now, as you can see, diplomatic relations are not good at all, apart from with Great Britain. We've got an alliance. Um, very, very friendly with Britain. Um, but they're the only ones, as you can see. Austria's are indifferent. France, unfriendly, not brilliant. Marathic of Century, unfriendly. Mughal Empire, unfriendly. Ottomans, indifferent. And po sort of Poland, Lithuania. Prussia, indifferent. Spain is unfriendly. There's the biggest problem, Spain. They're the closest ally and a big, big possible thorn in your side here. But you could get trade with them. You can trade with them over land. So I would immediately open up negotiations with Spain to try and get that, that really what could be a very prosperous trade uh, going there but that and that also the, f the longer you trade with them the better their attitude towards you will be so i definitely consider looking at so getting trade with them the minor nations as you can see you can't trade with any of the minor nations there's an assortment here of friendly indifferent unfriendly but most of them a lot of them are unfriendly to be honest with you or indifferent so maybe over time you can turn that around but a lot of them you're not going to really want to be trading with many of the, the minor nations yet mainly try and try and get the, the major nations to be trading with you that's where you're going to get most of your money from so again, Spain is the one to watch out for. You've got 
Morocco down here. Most Spanish focus will be on Morocco here. Getting your forces up here, both naval and um, military sort of land units, definitely get them as quickly as possible. We've got, oh, look at that! What a what a wonderful admiral there as well. Three bottle man, probably not brilliant there, but a superior admiral, and he's comfortably wealthy here, so he's he could possibly hinder his judgment there in battle. So we've got trade with Britain, as you can see here. That's quite strong trade, which is excellent to see. It really is. And of course, we do have here the research technology again. Personally, I would go for plug bayonet immediately to start moving down the sort of the military tech tree, um, and also trying to get naval off sh naval shore facilities as well. So I would go n plug bayonet, then I would go ring bayonet, um, and then I would definitely go military syllabus. But of course, you have to build the barracks first um, to be able to do that. But then get military syllabus. Then I would get naval shore facilities to get that port up here, with the, the ability to build sort of better ships as well, definitely get that increased here. And the first thing I do is probably move this fleet to here as well, just in case the Barbary states decide to come out of here and starting to besiege this port here. Maybe even squeeze out a ship if you can as well. One of these fifth rates here is a big investment, but it would be worth it in the long run, it really would. So that's where you're looking. Now to look at where we could possibly expand to. Now of course, I mean, Europe at the moment, that would really be out of the question. You don't want to get yourselves dragged into sort of a massive European war here, especially when you're down here, which means having to ferry troops back and forth into the European theatre here to fight. The Mediterranean is heavily dominated by the Spanish here and also the sort of the sort of smaller factions as it were. France will eventually get involved, Britain and probably the Netherlands will get involved. The, the, the war here in Poland and Austria and that they'll eventually get dragged in. So really I would keep steer, steer clear of Europe, but of course that is a, that is your choice. Some of you may decide to, that Europe is the place to go. You know, maybe trying to take some of these um, smaller nations, maybe Genoa out. Um, you get Corsica and G Genoa here, Liguria. Uh, maybe even taking out the Barbary states, which definitely would be North Africa would be one of the main targets here. Possibly for Portugal is North Africa. That really might prove dividends here. Um, of course, you've got the Ottoman Empire. Then further going to the Middle East, which I'd probably avoid. It's a bit of a hornet's nest at the start here. We've got Russia, of course, Sweden, right up here in the north. Personally, my main goal would definitely be the Caribbean. Absolutely, the Caribbean here, especially these pirate islands here. Um, looking to take out the, these pirate islands here, and with there is a chance the Dutch might collapse. Now what happens usually is either the French or the Spanish decide to attack the Dutch and usually they can collapse, not always, but they can collapse, which would give you Dutch Guyana and Pant Punda here. Dutch Guyana is so rich with natural resources, it would definitely be one of the main targets and so would Punda here, mainly for strategic regions and also the pirates as well I, I'd be targeting. Now, unless Spain was to get new Spain, if you, you could, it's possible so you could you could strike out into sort of the Pueblo nations or the sort of the Indian nations as it were um, here maybe taking Texas um, you know picking off a few of the sort of the the smaller nations as it were but personally I would be looking to move into the Caribbean mainly for strategic options because if you take Leeward Islands and the Trinidad and Tobago if anything happens around here you can immediately dive in and take what what is sort of left out here but again building up your military building up your naval forces is going to be absolutely paramount here it really really is um, and to be honest with you although your, lim your options are limited to start with if you play your cards right, if you look after your money, you definitely, definitely can be a very, very powerful force and a real force to be reckoned with. But remember, naval forces will be absolutely key to this entire campaign for Portugal. It is the absolute beating heart of their empire here is their trade through Porto. Do not lose Porto, my friends, otherwise you will find yourselves in a lot of trouble. But, my friends, that is where I'm going to leave this uh, nation's guide here. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've sort of gone over the basics and where possibly you could expand your way strategic and your sort of tactical um, positioning could be in the long run. But as many of you have probably made, some many of you may have already played Portugal. Please let me know in the comments. Put down in the comments how, how if you've played Portugal, what you've done, how you went about it, what were your st strategies, what were your tactics. Because it's really important to get that sort of that knowledge base built up so others can maybe want to play Portugal can use your tactics, use your strategies you use to conquer. Um, the campaign, as it were, you know, maybe even smash in Spain. You might even take on Spain directly and go straight for Madrid. Now that could, that could, it's a good possibility. If you were to go for Lisbon and immediately attack Madrid, that would be an absolute sort of, you know, put Spain right on the back foot. All they would have then is 
Gibraltar here, and they would have Brussels and Milan here. But if you were to take Madrid out immediately, that really would be a coup de grace. But let me know if you've done that. Put it in the comments. Let me know what you've done. Let me know what your plans might be. And of course, as your technology increases, as you're able to maybe trade with other nations' technology and vice versa. But trade is so important to Portugal. It really, really is. Because that is where your most your money is coming from. Through Porto, Porto must be guarded at all costs. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, my friends. Oh, and also one thing. You do start off with 7,500 as well in gold, which is not too bad at all. But really, this really is key here. You have a lot, a lot of trade coming in here, mainly because of the ivory you're getting here from the Ivory Coast, which is absolutely fantastic, which means you've probably got ships then in... Um, the Ivory Coast, and there it is. You've got a, a fleet here in the Ivory Coast picking up that um, that ivory here. Actually, oh, look at that. There's three galleon ships here as well, just to defeat these potential pirates here. But again, if you were to expand this fleet and even get more ships into this area, what a look at that. 1,126 come into there. What a wonderful sight that is. It really, really is. Absolutely fantastic. Um, do we have any other... Coast, and we've got off the coast of Brazil as well. You've got uh, another naval fleet here. Oh, that's a pretty formidable fleet there, actually, coming in from there, 930 from there. So, of course, Portugal has expanded into um, the sort of the trade routes here quite comprehensively here. Nothing here in East Indies, but I would expand the Ivory Coast and also the Brazilian, the coast of Brazil um, routes as quickly as possible because you've obviously got naval forces established there quite quickly. So that's another route to go for. But again, my friends, put down in the comments what you've done up. But I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please comment, like, and subscribe, my friends. And, you know, as always, thank you for your support. It's been absolutely fantastic. It really has. I thank you for all of your kind comments and all your comments as well. I mean, they really do mean absolutely fantastic. They really do mean a lot to me. But until next time, my friends, bye for now.